another like six pounder just laid on that chatterbait, dude. Baits, 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 baits. Welcome to Monkey Balls Fishing, dude. Do, do you know where we are? Do you, you know what's in all of these boxes? <laughs> baits, 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 baits. We are in the Gambler Warehouse down in South Florida, hanging out with Val. Um, we might even actually see him in a minute. But we're in the Gambler Warehouse, surrounded by all kinds, dude. Saltwater lures, bass fishing lures. <laughs> Look at all these things. This is Kid in the Candy Store moment right here. There, there are so many things. But I figured we are going into kind of, you know, that late winter, kind of like spring period. And, and there's something that I don't think I actually talk about enough. Um, I don't shoot enough videos with it, there's no doubt about it, but I've caught a ton of fish on it and, and big ones too. And that and that's a chatterbait, a bladed swim jig, dude. It's probably one of the most like breakthrough techniques in the past like five, six, seven years that, that's really come onto the scene. But, you know, obviously Gambler doesn't make chatterbaits, but one of the big tricks is, is what do you put on the back of it? Like what trailers do you use? And I got like three or four trailers that I think you know, some are a little bit standard, but some are a little bit unique and different. And I want to show you the, the three or four trailers that I use like day in and day out on the back of the chatterbait. So come with me. We're going to talk trailers on chatterbaits, late winter, early spring fishing, and maybe even just kind of randomly look at crazy baits. Cause, dude, there's, there's so, so many baits in here. Stay tuned. So if I had one trailer day in and day out and like I could only have one on the boat, it would be this guy. And let me, let me crack a few out. This is a little easy swim bait. You know, I really, I used to throw an easy swimmer swim bait, which is a little bit bigger. And you know, down in Florida, I'll, I'll still do that quite a bit. But the easy, the little easy, it's a little more compact. I think it's a 375 swim bait, but just a full bodied swim bait, which is nice because on that keeper, on that, on that bladed swim jig, it actually grabs and actually holds on. You can cut it down a hair if you want to like shrink up your presentation. Uh, this is one of the better you know, colors in, in Florida, probably one of the most like, um, one of the most purchased or the most popular colors. This is Copperfield. I'll use black, blue, green pumpkin. Uh, a lot of green pumpkin stuff. Sometimes I'll dye the tail. And then obviously gunners with a lot of shad, I'll go with like a, a white lightning or there's a few other shad colors, new shad and stuff like that. But what's really sweet with these jokers is, and I'm gonna throw you a bone and you might've already heard it, but instead of threading them on this way so they swim like this, like you would a normal swim bait, try this. This is a chatterbait trip for you. Put them on upside down. So what actually happens is, you know how that the chatterbait it it kind of you know searches and waves a little bit as you reel it in. But when you put this joker on upside down or even an easy swimmer with a little bit bigger tail, dude, you get a little bit of like an erratic searching action every once in a while, and it, and it just causes it to like s kind of funny. And we all know that the biggest thing with the chatterbait is that reaction bite. Most of your bites come when you like rip it off the grass or it's that pulsating bite. Well, it adds just kind of like a little English into that, that action and really draws that bite. So if I had one bait, one bait, little easy, just a little swim bait and turn it upside down. Here's some white ones. Those are pretty sweet, huh? So how about something weird? Let's go, let's go look at something weird to put on the back of it. So there's always a lot of hype about saltwater baits being transitioned into freshwater. And, and a lot of times, some of the techniques that we actually see on the bass side or the freshwater side are guys that go saltwater fishing. They're big into, you know, catching redfish, snook, tarpon, um, trout, all those kind of like inshore species. And then they take those techniques or those baits or those applications and they transition them into a more of a freshwater approach. And that's what this is literally what I'm going to show you. So this is a gambler eel, pretty gigantic. Now, unless you're on like Clear Lake or Sam Rayburn or Amistad or going to Mexico, this is probably too big for a chatterbait. However, what I've done is I actually take these eel baits and it's got that cool rib profile. It's it's a pretty sleek bait and it comes down to a taper. Do you see that? How the tail's like super skinny at the end? So I actually put these things on scrounger heads and use them just like you use a jerky J, but I will also take them and I'll cut them down to approximately six inches, which is right about there. And I will put that on the back of a chatterbait. And dude, this thing does this. It does this snaky wide movement. FYI, this is not like an 
early spring technique in the sense when the water's super cold because it does put like a lot of action on the bait and sometimes with that chatter bait almost like a square bill you want the wobble to be super tight because the water's so cold but that sort of summer peak or you know as the water's warming up in the 60s and those fish are getting skinny like into skinny water and they're eating dude like they're reacting like you want big fast hard what is it hard fat i don't know there's some rap song like that but they cut the tail off cut it down to about six inches slide it up on there um the jokers come in black too so it basically covers me i'm a big light and dark fisherman they're either eating brim or they're eating shad so i'll take a black one and do the exact same thing on my on my green pumpkin chatter baits or my you know my black and blue chatter baits down in florida but kind of a cool um, technique that and i'm sure they haven't seen it if you guys want to get really crazy and you got spotted bass and you want to cut down like a little little micro chatter bait or a swim bait trailer or not swim bait trailer, spinner bait trailer. But be thinking about that. A lot of those saltwater techniques, they traverse over to the freshwater and you can kind of be ahead of the game on pressure bodies of water, doing something different, showing them something pretty cool. These guys right here are classic. This is a burner crawl. And it's just your standard, you know, kicking appendages. See them right there? Um, like crawfish bait. What's kind of cool about this is it does have that nice, solid, cynical body. We've talked about it before with the Ned Rigs, where you kind of have that that stick bait style body. Well, what's nice with this is once again talking about like the keeper, like we talked about with the swim bait, because you have all that dense plastic, you get very good grab on your keeper. Because one of the biggest things that we run into with the chatter bait is, is that you know your trailer's sliding down, dude. Like you rip it off the grass, you know, you're reeling it fast, you put a little English on it, and that trailer slides down. With the kind of bulkier plastics or with those at least the cylindrical kind of like dense plastics, they'll grab on there and not move. So when would you use the the burner crawl? Burner crawl is more of like kind of like a mid-spring kind of a deal. Once again, it has these double appendages, the kicking legs. I find that they want more of that action as the, as the water's more stable, warm kind of deal. So it's a perfect bait kind of, I guess in Florida, it'd be like March or so, maybe even a little earlier, like February, March. As you go further north, you're looking at more like March, April kind of deal. When those fish get shallow, they're on some of that grass that's coming up, but they're a little more active. They're, they're staging, they're looking to spawn just puts a little more action on it. And I actually, I see how greasy my fingers are getting? That's, a, that's another thing why you put a trailer on there. It's, it makes them hold on to that chatterbait just like a half second longer to kind of close the deal. But I'll actually cut that thing down to that really to make like a compact chatterbait because you can't put a trailer hook on a chatterbait so I want the presentation to be fairly compact and I really don't want it to be all about the plastic. I want the plastic to add to the lure but really the chatterbait is about the skirt which I'll also trim down and then that blade. It's just a glorified square bill so I don't want to bulk it up too much so I'll actually cut that thing down to about there and slide that joker on it. What color is it? It's Junebug Shadow Blue. That's kind of a crazy color. See how it's blue on one side and Junebug on the other? But Burner Crawl. Awesome friggin' trailer. Little more active fish, though. Kind of like mid to late spring. And then summer, obviously, dude, when they start, like, firing off and you catch them one after the other, right? All right. So we talked kind of really focused on, like, mid to late spring. This is my late winter, early spring trailer. I've caught a lot of giants and it's super, dude, like it's funny how things are like traditional and they've worked for years and they continue to work. But this is like your do nothing trailer on a chatterbait. And I absolutely love it. Where, it's not even a color. I wonder if you have a color that I like. This is it. This is it right here. This is what's called the super stud. And yes, it, it's just basically, it's a fluke. Uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit it, but I'm gonna tell you why I like the Gambler one a little bit more than your standard like Zoom fluke, but you can use any of them. First off, it's it's a do nothing bait. Like it's a straight tail, you know, forage mimicking, like minnow, it's a, it's a memo fake, minnow, memo, 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 memo. I'm so professional. It's a minnow faker, bro. This is the Arkansas Shiner, I think. Yeah, Arkansas Shiner color. But I love anything with a little bit of pearl, and a little bit of green. It seems to mimic shad, it mimics brim, it mimics all those things. But here's the reason why I like the Gambler one. The Gambler one has a little bit softer plastic than your standard Zoom. So what ends up happening is they get like super chattery, just like a, a robo worm is very like twitchy. These are a bit softer, so they're very twitchy, FYI. Putting this with the, the separated body and just that little small head on the keeper, they do tend to slide down after you catch a few fish or after you're, you're like ripping them. But I've found in early spring, this does not 
add a bunch of action to the chatterbait, nor does it take away from it. It actually just complements it. It doesn't have a bunch of like kicking appendages or anything like that. What ends up happening is as the chatterbait, you'll notice when you fish a chatterbait that even though you're reeling it straight, because that blade is going back and forth, there's a little bit of rocking or rolling action to it. We mentioned a, a square bill earlier in the videos. It has a, an action much like a square bill, but it stays you know, up in the water column more so instead of like diving down and bouncing off of stuff, but it has that rolling action. Well, what happens when you put this thing on that is you get this roll, which then also just very subtly kicks that tail up. It's like this awesome sort of very small pulsing. If you see like little minnows in the water that are like swimming around, you'll see they kind of go D -d 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 -d. like it doesn't move that much. They just kind of kick their tail and they it, it's almost like a vibration versus like a kicking. But this guy, I've caught multiple, multiple fish over seven on Okeechobee, fishing grass, fishing hydrilla, and, and it's a great rip bait too because it doesn't get clung on the grass. You know, it's just your chatterbait kind of hooking the grass. You rip it off, especially if you're fishing braid. It's a very clean bait to fish. Like I said, only downside is you do get some slippage on the head. But dude, a super stud, fluke style bait on the back of a chatterbait is literally my absolute favorite, especially in that early season time. You know, early spring, late winter. You wanna have a plastic on there, you wanna have a trailer, but you want it super subtle. You want it kind of do nothing. You want it to be all about that hard bait, all about that chatter bait. So I'm gonna throw you one more fun one before we go out. And this is kind of like a little DIY, like, you know, I don't know, cheap angler trick. And it's something that I noticed actually, I went to clean my boat one day and I looked at the bottom of my boat and I'm like, I have all of this crap, all these used plastics like sitting here at the bottom of my boat and they're going to waste, you know? And especially as we get into like, you know, I don't know, early summer, like ledge season, you know, kind of like that March, April, May, June, dude, it's tough to be a ribbon tail worm, your classic ribbon tail. This is, um, this is a 10 inch worm, pretty standardized, dude, super simple. But it's also kind of a, a little different bait in the sense that back in the day, I guess, like if you go back like old school in Fisherman, Bassmaster Magazine, you always used to see these guys doing like drawings or mock-ups of like spinner baits with these trailers on them. A lot of them were grubs, but they would put ribbon tail worms on them because that's really what they had available. They didn't, there wasn't, especially in like the eighties or so, there wasn't really that much diversity in plastics. You had your craw baits, you had your worms, you know, it was pretty straightforward. But say, you know, you're fishing worms, things along those lines, you know, through the grass and that, yeah, you hook one or you rip the head off the worm. Something that you can do, and it doesn't even have to be a ribbon tail. Say you got a burner worm. Say you got like a little swimming worm. Any of those style worms, dude, well, even though you ripped up the first like inch and a half because you like tore it up with a hook, you still have this epic ribbon tail, curly tail worm. So what I'll do is I'll actually cut them, if I can, usually right below the worm sack right there. My fingers are so greased up, dude. I gotta wash my hand. And then I'll just slide that on as a trailer. It's usually a little bulkier trailer because some of the worms are a bit bigger, but it's cool in the sense that they don't usually see it. And that undulating kind of action you get out of a ribbon tail is very different than a lot of the kicking appendages that you see, say on a swim bait, you know, the boot tail, definitely a different kind of action. The burner crawl, it's kind of that, that waving kicking action. This is definitely more of a, an undulating kind of pulsating action. Has a different feel for the lateral line, and I know we've talked about that a whole bunch with crankbaits, how that lateral line, communicating with that lateral line, draws out different fish to bite. Maybe bigger ones, maybe smaller ones, maybe ones from farther away, whatever. But definitely something to think about. Look at your junk used plastics, things that you've been you know, pitching docks with, things that you've been pitching your jigs with, or something like that, and don't throw them out right away. If they're laying on the back of the boat or on the bottom of the boat, we're gonna throw them in a bag, dude, and bring them back out and cut them down and just use that back part, which is still pretty, you know, usually in pretty good condition because the hook wasn't through it, slide it up on the trail or on the, the shank of that, that hook on your chatterbait, and um, who knows, you might figure out something that's absolutely epic. But try a ribbon tail worm. You'll actually be surprised how cool it looks in the water. I want you to put this on a chatterbait and catch one. That's eight and a half inches of, of juice. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys can take away a few trailers to, to try out because uh, we're moving into that time of year when that chatterbait really starts to shell off. If you guys got some suggestions, you know, I'm always looking for your input because you guys got a bunch of experience built up, dude. You watch the videos, you learn, I learn. It's a nice kind of like 
reciprocal kind of process, which is what I think fishing is about when it comes down to it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out Gambler. We didn't get to say hi to Val, but I want to go steal some baits, so whatever. We'll be real sneaky and steal a bunch of stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Maybe stealing, but I might even be in jail because I'm about to steal a whole lot of baits. <laughs> Tight lines, guys. We're out.